following lecture was produced by Glorianne Publishing, a nonprofit organization, and is one of hundreds of lectures freely available via download, podcasts, streaming radio, and transcription. These lectures range in topic and complexity in order to address the many needs of humanity. We invite you to browse our library of lectures, books, courses, and articles to find teachings that suit you. Through the support of donations, Glorian Publishing has published 40 books, hosts international retreats several times a year, offers free online courses, and many other valuable resources, available to anyone worldwide. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Your donations make it possible for this free public service to reach thousands of people every day. To make a tax-deductible donation in any amount, even anonymously, visit GnosticTeachings.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. According to the Greek language, we find that Christos means the one that purifies. But this word comes from the other similar word, Christos, that is the mediator, or the one that searches for the truth, or the one that already uh, knew the truth and is uh, capable to explain it or the one that already walked on the path and is uh, capable to show the path. Christus is as well he who interprets oracles. He who interprets oracles is of course the spirit of truth which is in Hebrew chokmah, the wisdom. The goal of any initiate is to incarnate that spirit and of course when you are searching for that spirit and then you are called Christian and when you incarnate right, the spirit you become a Christus which is a searcher or someone that knows the path and can interpret the truth. The goal is to uh, transform ourselves into Christos, which means the purifier, the one that already reached the goal. Of course, we have uh, many translations in our languages. You call Christ, right? But the word Christ comes from the word Christos. If you see in the ancient Greece, the oracle was represented by this place uh, where always the fire was burning. And there we find the, the pythonists or the prophetesses that were women capable to be vehicle of the fire of this spirit, capable to decipher uh, different type of oracles. That's why in the ancient Greece we find that uh, instead of men there were women, there were prophetesses. Prophetesses of, the, of that spirit, of that fire, of that Christus. Right. This is how the Greeks uh, named that spirit, the Christus. And this is how uh, we inherit that name, Christo. Christ in order to be called Christians but in reality we have to understand that uh, in order to be a real Christian we have to be first of all Christian because Christus is the one that uh, deciphers oracles and Christus is the one that already reached the goal anyhow both uh, words come from the same source. And uh, uh, according to the parables 
and the prophecies of the ancient uh, masters of Israel, and also in many uh, stories of Greece, we find that uh, they were waiting for the Messiah. The Messiah, which is, of course, in Hebrew, the one which is anointed. And uh, the one which is anointed is that one who has the spirit of, of God, or that uh, spirit of, of prophecy, or the spirit of uh, capable to decipher oracles, according to the, to the Greeks. So the Hebrews were waiting for the Messiah, and the Greeks for the Christus. The word Messiah is uh, a synonym of Christus. But, the, but Christus is a Greek word, and Messiah is a, a Hebrew word. Right. This is something that we have to, to understand. In each era or age, the Spirit of the Lord, the Christus, or the Messiah, is incarnated in order to teach humankind. This is something that we have to understand because most of the so-called Christians of this epoch, they, when they talk about the Messiah or the Christus, he who is the uh, illuminated or anointed, they think that only Jesus by himself is the only one. But they ignore that uh, before Jesus there were many Messiahs, many masters that were the initiators of different epochs different uh, ages in order to teach the same truth. So when we talk about that spirit of prophecy or the one that is capable to decipher oracles because he in, in himself is wisdom we have to understand that it is not a person but an entity and when we talk about an entity we have to understand that it is of course not a person, not an individual, but an energy, a strength of force which is diluted in all the universe and everywhere. So, of course, Christus, the spirit of life or the spirit of wisdom, is diluted in all of the type of matters that we find in this universe. It's the center of any matter. Without this spirit, matter cannot have life and organization. The whole organization and intelligence that we find in the different development of matter in this universe is due to that spirit that we call Christus, which is, I repeat, not a person, but a strength, a force, an entity that is diluted in everywhere. So uh, that intelligence is always incarnating in different epochs in order to guide the souls to the uh, absolute truth, because it is the spirit or the entity that guide the souls towards the absolute, because it is in itself the first emanation of the absolute. For that is spirit, that Christ is called, of course, fire. That's why uh, when we say that we are Christianos, we have to say that we are worshippers of fire, but not the common and current fire, in Greek words, of course. This spirit of prophecy is always uh, incarnated in many epochs in different uh, places and races in order to guide, I repeat, the souls towards the source of life, which is the Father. Being it, or him, the first emanation of that which is the source of life, he is, of course, one with that source. If we call the source of life the Father, and then we understand that the fountain of life is, of course, the Father, and the water that comes from that is the Lord, the Christ, which is an entity which is diluted in all the matter, I repeat. In different epochs, always the Lord or this uh, spirit or entity is incarnated in different levels according to the vessel in which it is uh, 
the positive. In, uh, among the initiates, there are many uh, levels. The higher level that we know in this uh, solar system is uh, related with the Lord Alvaramento, which we knew and we know in this planet Earth with the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus of Nazareth is uh, the physical vehicle of the Master Alvaramento, who is the higher initiate among all the vessels, highest, among all the vessels, among all the vessels that incarnated the Lord of that spirit in order to teach the same thing, the same religion, the same truth uh, in different places. If we see, for instance, uh, in India, we find the Lord Krishna, who teaches the same truth in different levels, of course, according to his own vessel. The vessel of Krishna, who is uh, one with that spirit, and is a spirit, the same spirit itself, the Bodhisattva of Krishna is, of course, Arjuna. And you find in the, in the Bhagavad Gita that uh, Arjuna is uh, the one that is talking to the Lord Krishna. But you have to understand that Arjuna is uh, the Bodhisattva of Krishna. So Krishna is the master of Arjuna. Krishna is the master, Arjuna is the Bodhisattva. Who is learning from him and at the same time is teaching to others through the things that he is writing. So Krishna is, of course, one with the Lord, with that spirit. Krishna is itself the same spirit that we call Vishnu. We find also Rama, another master, who is another incarnation of that spirit. And we find in Greece, uh, Plato, for instance, who is another incarnation, and many other masters of that race. Buddha, for instance, and many other Buddhas uh, in Buddhism are the incarnation of that spirit. And uh, in the Hebrew pantheon, the Hebrew religion, which is the one that we know the most, Abraham was an incarnation of that spirit. Isaac, Jacob, Noah, Moses, and uh, the rest of the prophets that we find in the Old Testament, in the Bible. The thing is that when we talk about this spirit of prophecy, or this uh, entity which is capable to incarnate in many places, in different times, in order to establish the religion or the way to the union with God, is known in this uh, winter world through the Bible. And this is a confusion because there are a lot of ignorance related with uh, this spirit because in different uh, places this is many names. Among the Tibetans, for instance, the Christ is Ava Loki Devara. And you find that name uh, in the Buddhist uh, pantheon, Ava Loki Devara. Among the Taoists, you find Quan Yin. Quan Yin is, of course, according to the Tao, the subtle voice or the sweet voice, the verb. Among the Mayans, they call uh, they call him Kukul Kang. The word Kukul means bird and Khan means serpent. So when you say Kukul Khan, this means the bird serpent. That in Aztec language or Nahua is Quetzalcoatl. There uh, among the Peruvians, the Incas of Peru, they call him Viracocha. Viracocha, Vishnu, the Lord. Of course, uh, Chokhmah, 
in the Kabbalah, as you know, means wisdom. And it is related with this spirit of wisdom. But of course, uh, uh, 2,000 years ago, the Hebrews were waiting for the incarnation of, the, of that spirit of wisdom that was prophesied by many prophets in the past because uh, the, the coming of this spirit among the Hebrews, according to the prophecies, was the highest incarnation of that spirit in a man. And everybody, not only the Hebrews, but in all the places among the initiates, they knew that the Lord, the highest initiate of the Lord, was going to be incarnated in the beginning of the, uh, the era of Pisces that started, as you know, 2,000 years ago. And everybody was waiting, of course, the incarnation of that highest initiate in order to help this uh, planet Earth because he was going to, to make a special work in relation with this humanity. And that's why the Hebrews were, of course, uh, preparing the body, the physical body, and the uh, uh, structure or the organization for this great initiative in order to start an age of gold, a solar age, for this planet Earth, and in order to teach the solar religion of the Lord, the Christ, all over the places. Under the direction, of course, of the great master Abramento. Unfortunately, he was betrayed by the initiates and uh, the Black Lodge, of course, who was working very hard <coughs> at that time. And uh, instead of to have uh, rabbis teaching the Gnosis, of the new Christianity in relation to the Kabbalah, you know that uh, the people of Israel turn uh, their back against the Lord, and that's why the Greeks were the ones that were preaching the knowledge of the Lord instead of the rabbis. Even though in the beginning there were uh, many rabbis that were following the new era, but most of the traditional people of Israel betrayed the Lord at this time, and they didn't uh, follow their, their, their new order. When Jesus was teaching, there was a division among the, the Hebrews. Rabbis or initiates, masters, that were, uh, that they, uh, they were agreed. Uh, with Jesus in order to teach uh, an era of, of, of gold, a solar age, and to disseminate the knowledge among the Gentiles. The Gentile is an Aryan, a gentle people. The same word Ariya or Aryan is the same meaning. So when you say Gentile or Aryan, it means that you are not a Jew. So in this planet Earth, we find two types of races, Aryans and Jews. The Jews were the only ones, survivors of the Atlantic, uh, of the Atlantis uh, uh, race, that they didn't mix with other races after the huge. So they were preparing, of course, a special vessel for the Lord. But at the end, they are to be betrayed, even though they still are trying to keep the their blood different. The origin of the of the Jews are in the fourth sub race of the Atlantis race. Well, it's a mixture of, of the, that race with the Hyperboreans in order to make a special race, uh, in order to establish special uh, organization for the health of this planet was already fallen in this race. At the beginning of Christianity, as you know, the Christians or the Gnostics that were uh, preaching the Gnosis in relation with the higher Kabbalah, as you know, uniting all of the, the rest of the uh, religions of the world in one. That's why when you find Gnosis, 
in the ancient time, 2,000 years ago, many of the searchers, they uh, become mistaken because they ignore that the Gnostics of 2,000 years ago, they were initiating on the direction of Jesus, the solar religion, the golden age of the, of the Pisces era, in order to unite all the religions of the world under the flag of the Kabbalah. They were, of course, uh, teaching the same thing in relation to the different uh, symbology of the different religions of the world. That's why the Nazis were talking about Buddhism, uh, Zoroastrism, Brahmanism, and even the religions of the America that was coming from the Mayans. Because Jesus knew very deeply the knowledge of uh, the religion of the Mayans that he uh, learned in Tibet because a religion of the Buddhism of Tibet was founded by the Mayans found right, by the Mayans from the, in the time of Atlantis because the Maya religion was the religion that was of course related with the Atlantis before the deluge the Mayan which was of course the wisdom of the serpent or the feather serpent that was uh, exported into Tibet to the Tibetans that's why they say that the first wife of Buddha was called Maya so you find of course the root of uh, all religions in this uh, planet earth in this moment coming from the ancient Atlantis which uh, I repeat the special religion of the principal religion was the Mayan religion that uh, we uh, found in, in this very moment in Mexico, in Central America, by a very, uh, uh, very weak knowledge, not strong the knowledge as, as it was in the time. The Mayans were the founders of uh, Buddhism in Tibet, and you find uh, you find in the uh, in the many uh, scrolls that you find in Tibet story of that, of course written in a very ancient language, incapable to translate in the presence of a very rare people, or man, Egypt can do that. Of course the Mayan uh, religion, or the religion of the serpent, the green serpent, that is the reality of the Mayan religion, the green serpent, that was inherited by uh, the Atlantis from the ancient Lemurians. So from the Lemuria, of course, at that time there was a different name, but the real uh, Mayan religion was uh, worshipped here in America after the deluge. And they were, of course, colonizing uh, Tibet and other lands of Asia after the deluge. Mayans were the masters that were teaching in Egypt that's why you find the, the very close similitude between the pyramids of Mexico and Central America and with uh, Egypt. Because the real uh, founders of all of the religions of the actual Aryan race were the Atlanteans. Jesus knew very well all of the religions, of course, or the source of the religions of the Aryan race when he was in Tibet and he knew even Mayan language. The words that he pronounced in the cross, Eli, Eli, Lamak, Sabachthani, is Mayan language, which means in this very moment I am entering before the dawn of his presence. That is the translation of Eli, Eli, Lamak, Sabachthani, that in the Gospels is translated in, in different ways because it is not Hebrew but it's a Mayan language that Jesus pronounced on the cross. So the objective of the Gnostics under the direction of Jesus was to organize all the knowledge of the world that was spread by many masters in different races and epochs in one in order to teach the of humanity the solar religion of the world. But of course the Jews that were uh, with his uh, traditional religion uh, opposing 
the idea in order to mix their Kabbalah with other, let's say, pagan religions, saying that their religion were the only holy etheric, as you know, at the very moment when all the religions are holy, anyhow. That was, of course, the problem in the beginning. Uh, Paul was the one that was, of course, teaching and was uh, teaching the real Gnosticism in that epoch. If you know, if you read the Gospels, Paul was very knowledgeable of in paganism. And he was teaching the Greeks in many other parts of the world uh, the religion of Jesus in relation with paganism. Right. And he knew very well. Among, uh, that's why it's very difficult to in interpret his uh, epistles, his letters, because they are related with Kabbalah and, Osco and paganism at the same time. Right. Something that it would be a scandal for Christians because they ignore many parts of this. So the Jews or the fanatics of the Judaism were fighting against uh, Jesus, against his disciples, and of course against Paul, who was the one that was teaching the real Gnosis at that time. That's why there were divisions. Still we uh, read in the Gospels the story of uh, Simon the Magician, that many initiates of, of this time, they think that he was a white magician, but in reality he was a black, and he is a black magician, due to the fact that he rejected he rejected the hierarchy of Jesus being the avatar of the era of Isis and he preferred to teach in his own way without obeying the hierarchy of the avatar of Isis who was the master Abramento, Jesus of Nazareth. The result there was a rebellion against the hierarchy and uh, Simon the magician turned into black magician by of pride. And like him, of course, who is an example, there were a lot of initiates, Kabbalists, that they were turning into the left hand because they were not following the guidance of Jesus, who was the avatar. When we know about the avatar, we have to understand this. The avatar is always the vehicle of that spirit, which is the Christ. And the Christ or the Messiah is always working through the avatar. So in order to follow the Lord, we have to follow the avatar. When I say that we have to follow the avatar, I mean the teachings of the avatar. Because each time the Lord, the Christ, is renewing his own teachings in relation with the epoch. The problem with the Jews is that they were following Moses, who was another avatar, who was the incarnation of the Lord. But when Jesus came, instead of to follow the new avatar, or the new vessel of the Lord, they were turning his back and following the past, which was Moses in, this, in the time. So each time the light is renewed, and we have to follow the light, because always the Lord is teaching in a higher level, right, according to the epoch. So that was the problem among the Jews. A real initiate in any place always discovered within himself who is the real avatar. Because in the time of Jesus, there were many masters, or many initiates, or many persons that were claiming that they were the avatar of Pisces. But only one triumph, and that one was Jesus. As a result, you know now that everybody talks about Jesus. Right? But in the time of Jesus, there were a lot of uh, people claiming that they were the avatars. When do you discover that uh, who is the avatar, or the real avatar, in the way that Paul discovered? Paul, in the time of Jesus, he was chasing the the Gnostics, the 
Christians of that time that were claiming that they were, of course, uh, followers of the real avatar of Pisces. But Paul was chasing them and healing them. But he was as well an initiate. And in the path, in certain level of his initiation, he discovered within himself and he saw the Lord in the path when he was going to Damascus. And he discovered that the real avatar was Jesus. And he discovered that he was chasing him by uh, bothering his own people. And he turned back, and he was after that worshiping Jesus as an avatar, knowing that he was the vessel of the new uh, spirit of the Lord working at that time. This is the moment in which we have to understand that in order to discover who is the avatar is through the initiation. When you reach the fifth initiation of fire is when you discover who is the real avatar. For instance, in this time, you find that the Swami Prabhupada, he claims to be the avatar of Aquarius. Sai Baba, he claims to be the avatar of Aquarius. And many other ones, this other founder of the Aquarian organization is called okay, Jesus uh, Atta Yoga. Simon Reynaud de la Ferriere. He claims to be the avatar of Aquarius. And uh, you find like seven avatars. Uh, when I found seven uh, uh, many years ago, now they are appearing more that they claim to be the avatar of Aquarius. So when you enter in this type of knowledge, and you know the Gnosis, and you find uh, that the Master Samael on the or uh, he claims to be also the avatar of Aquarius, and then you, you wonder, right, who is in reality the avatar? And when the Master Samael was questioning about this type of uh, thing that is happening, he said, well, you will see who is the real avatar. He who is capable to take his own people out of the flame and the smoke in the moment of the great catastrophe, he is going to be the avatar. So I don't care what the people say in this time. I know that there are many that are claiming that they are the avatar of the Christ. But believe it or not, he says, I am the avatar of Aquarius. And I'm telling you that you have to be prepared for the great catastrophe. And in the day of the smoke and the flame, you will see the hit. I heard that, and I didn't understand. In the, in, the, in the day of the smoke and the fire, you will see the heat. Or at the moment of the heat and the fire, you will see the smoke as well. Right. Until I reach a tiny level of initiation, and then I, I am really convinced that he is the avatar. But what, because it was an uh, internal experience that you had to pass, like uh, in the case of Paul in the Bible, after being an enemy of the Christians, he turns into the most friendly person of the Christians. Because he saw the Lord within himself in his entire level. So in this time, uh, in this very moment, I'm telling you, the Master Samael is the avatar of Aquarius, not because I read it, or because somebody told me, not because I experienced that with my own spirit. So I'm convinced, and that's why I'm teaching this. In spite of all the other avatars, I know that the Master Samael is going to, uh, going to be the one that is going to come. And the doctrine spoke from himself. In relation uh, with the initiation, is how you find the, the path and the truth in order to discover how to follow the real path in order to self-realize or to reach self-realization as many claim in this time in many places of the world different schools that teaches the self-realization of the being in relation with uh, with the path in relation with the knowledge in relation with the Christians, we find seven types of Christians. We can apply these seven types of Christians 
to any type of religion. You can say there are seven types of uh, Muslims, seven types of Buddhists, seven types of, uh, of Jews, seven types of uh, Brahmins. Who is the first type? Is what we call the air Christian. Uh, the word air uh, means, you know, is he who inherits their religion of his own town, of his own people. When you are born and your parents, your grandparents, your family relate to a certain type of religion, and then you follow that religion because you inherit it, but not because you wanted to have it. So this is how you find in these uh, times uh, many people that call themselves uh, Christians and when they are questioned about different things in relation with Christianity, they ignore a lot of it because they don't know what Christianity means. They celebrate, of course, the festivities of Christianity, Christmas, the Holy Week, and many other type of uh, festivities without inquiring why, and just because they like to receive gifts in Christmas. The second type is the mystical. As you know, the mysticism is related to the heart, to the emotional center. Are those uh, Christians that uh, are related with the worshiping of the Lord? That they go to their religion to celebrate the masses. Everything they like to, to go in the temples. They pray, and they have a strong uh, belief. We cannot say strong faith, because if we said strong faith, we have to say they have strong blind faith. Because in our knowledge, we know that faith is something that you prove, that you experience directly with your consciousness, not with your mind. When you believe in something without proving it, you are just a mystical type of person that feel in your heart that strength of your belief, but you don't know the reality of it. So there are a lot of persons that have a, a strong blind faith uh, belief in his religion, whether they are uh, Catholic. Among the Catholics, where you find this type of people, that they go to the church, and they worship the different saints and angels and the, and the Lord and the Virgin Mary, but they don't know anything about this. They have faith in that and they put their heart. And they are, of course, very faithful, faithful uh, worshippers without inquiring anything. Right? They are not mechanical like the first ones. But the first one, they don't care anything about uh, uh, worshiping is nothing. They just are Christians because they have to be, but they don't care anything about uh, the mystical thing and the mind. The third type is the intellectual type of Christian, which is the one that inquires his own religion. He wants to know every detail of his religion. And he reads the Bible and he memorizes it. And he knows every paragraph of it and every verse. Of course, when I say an intellectual worshiper, I mean that the intellectual part of this person is over the emotional and over the traditional part of him. Because he is Christian by tradition is mystical as well, but the intellectual part is uh, is gaining place over the other two parts. While when I am telling you the, the uh, mystical uh, Christian, the intellectual part of this Christian is of course zero. And the 
mystical Christian is, uh, uh, of course, also by tradition, but he is more delivered. He delivers himself more to the to the religion than to the traditional way. But the intellectual, uh, further than knowing or going to the worship and the church and being a traditional by by inheritance. He is, of course, studying the Bible. The intellectual type is the one that thinks that uh, memorizing the different uh, chapters and verses of the Bible is the way in order to be a better Christian. This type of, of Christian is very singular and always uh, full of pride, believing that he's better than the others because he knows a lot of the Bible. Without knowing that the intellectual uh, or the animal intellect is not capable to understand the spiritual things of God, but even though he thinks that he knows because he is memorizing or rationalizing the different truths you find in the Bible. For example, those uh, intellectual Christians are for the moment Jehovah Witnesses, which are very famous for their intellectual way of memorizing the Bible. And many other uh, intellectual Christians that you find. These three types of Christians, traditional, mystical, and intellectual, are the Tower of Babel. The Tower of Babel because they do not understand each other. The intellectual type Things that is better than the than the mystical and traditional. The traditional do not understand the intellectual. He thinks they just why to waste time learning to memorize or to go to the temple. While the mystical thing that worship in the Lord is enough. And you find that they fight among themselves, saying that our religion is better, like the Catholic. They point the Protestant, the Protestant point the the Catholic. In like them, right? that why it's called the confusion of tongues of the religions. But there is one that is, of course, out of that Tower of Babel, which is a searcher. The one that is searching from the knowledge. They understand that Christianity is not just the memorizing of the chapters or the worshiping, but the understanding of the of the meaning of Christianity, the esoteric or the occult part of Christianity. And among the searchers are those that they know that exists the kingdom of heaven, the higher dimensions, the angels, the saints, and the Bible talk about demons, etc., and all that this uh, extra terrestrial people out of this three-dimensional world. And they want to experience. They want to see and to touch by by direct experience with their own consciousness the facts of the Bible. The Bible talks about clairvoyance, clairaudience, and you see, for instance, the power of Moses, the power of the prophets, the power of the apostles. And this type of Christian wants to experience and develop those type of powers. Is not uh, happy just being a Christian just because somebody says that he is a Christian. But uh, among the searchers, unfortunately, they fall into different type of uh, practices which are negative, which are witchcraft, sorcery, black magic. Most of these searchers are, of course, uh, going into the spiritism, thinking that they can experience or to hear the same knowledge of the Bible through the mediums of spiritism. And most of the time they mix the doctrine of the Lord Krishna of India with the theory of materialism, of the evolution, of Darwin. This is something comical or comic. But uh, this type of spiritists, they are accustomed to mix the theory of Darwin, that the man comes from the ape, 
or the cavemen with uh, the doctrine of the Lord Krishna, the chakras, the reincarnation, and they make a, a, a big mess of it. And among them you find in these times the so-called chandlers, which are mediums, of course, and the name that they are giving this modern epoch for those type of people. A very uh, sophisticated uh, person related with this type of searcher that, that she claims to be, of course, a great guide is uh, Elizabeth Fleur Prophet, who is a medium and mix uh, things from the ancient religion of Buddhism, Islamism, and many of the religions with spiritism. And there are a lot of people following her. You have to know that a spirit of the underworld, of the abyss, or the kipot, in order to catch you, this spirit has to talk good things, because you are a searcher of the light. If you are a searcher of darkness, or you want to be a criminal, something evil, you are not going to, to go into something good. So this type of spiritism of people, they like to teach good things, they talk about wisdom, love, etc., in order to catch the searcher. Right? It's a way to catch it. The reality is that uh, the clue in order to discover this type of individual is when he talks against chastity against uh, the annihilation of the ego, which is the main, two main things in the self realization of the being, that we have the being. And you find a lot of them, like this uh, Elizabeth Clare prophet. Sometimes we say that we don't have to name persons in order not, in order not to make to follow criticism. But this type of woman, I like to say is her name. Because I don't like to see the people following someone who is not a, a, a true master. Because there are many masters teaching good things. But this one, I saw her in TV knocking the forehead of the people with a piece of stone in order to mark the people, saying that she, she was the angel of the sixth seal and to make, her, and make them sell, uh, safe. It was just a joke, a big joke. And there were many people in one line receiving the stone in the forehead, right? And she, and she was just with a piece of, uh, how do you call it, crystal stone, right? So you can awake positive and negative, right? That is the problem. The people, when they, when they see uh, awakening, an initiate or, or a person with awakening, or with life or in slavery evidence and doing many things, they think that is a good one, right? But uh, you cannot wait in the evil and for the evil or in the good and for the good. The only way to discover the awakening in a good way is by annihilating the ego and canalizing the sexual force, being in chastity, completely against the animal soul. So it's very difficult to find a searcher that is in the right path in this uh, era of Aquarius, you find a lot of people that are searching for the truth. But unfortunately, they like the easy way. Just chant this mantra, Hare Hare, Krishna Hare Hare, Hare Hare, and, he is, and then you are going to be united with the Lord, the Christ, with Krishna. Right. Pretty easy. Just to chant the Hare Hare, right? It's a mantra, powerful. But it's just a tool that you need in order to wake consciousness. But now it's not the whole thing. It's like, if you think, like the Catholics think, right, going to the church and, and confessing the sins of the prisoner, the prisoner says, you are forgiven, and you are ready to, to heaven, or like the fundamentalists, right? They say, just believe in, raise your arm and believe in Jesus, and my, according to the chapter and verse such and such, right, and you are saved. And he is going to come and take you to the heaven as well. <laughs> you know already that the path is not that easy. So the real path are related with the three factors of the revolution of the consciousness. To be born again. 
to awake the consciousness by the annihilation of the ego and giving love to humanity, which means to teach that to those that wants to awake. When you create by alchemy the astral body, and then you discover that your astral body, the solar astral body, is the first vehicle which has the shape of the Lord Christ. So the astral body is in itself the mediator between the physical body and your own monad. That's why when you become to have the astral body, you turn into a true Christian. A true Christian because the astral body is the vehicle of the astral light and the astral light is that spirit. So when that astral light coagulates within you by the transmutation of the sexual energy and crystallizes as the astral body, you have your own particular Christ, your own particular mediator between your physical body within the, which within the consciousness is and your spirit, your mind. And you use the astral body in order to travel while your physical body sleeps into the higher dimensions and you investigate the mysteries of death, death and life. And you even can uh, talk with your own being, your own moment, in order to seek guidance. When you create the astral body, you receive your own sacred name. Your monad has already that name. But when you create the astral body, then you receive that name in yourself. And then you are called in the astral plane with that name. That is, of course, your solar personality. The reality of an immortal body. And being with the astral body, you turn into a true Christian. Because you are a real uh, person, that is, you are a mediator between your own monad, between your own God and the people. And then you can help by teaching the truth or wisdom in relation with your own level. But then you are the true Christian. There is the real Christian. The real Christian is when you incarnate the reality. That reality is the spirit. That spirit which is beyond the astral light, which is the Logos. When the Logos wants to descend, when the spirit wants to descend, or when the Christ wants to descend into humanity, he needs a vessel. First of all, he needs that the initiate has to create a uh, an astral body. And uh, not only the astral body, but the mental solar body and the causal or the body of will. Having the initiate astral body, mental body, and causal body, and he and if he chooses to follow the direct path and not the spiral then the Logos descends into the womb of his own Divine Mother Kundalini through the grace of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is that third aspect of himself. So then the Lord, through the Holy Spirit, which is the third aspect of himself, descends into the womb of the feminine aspect of the Holy Spirit, which is the Divine Mother Kundalini. And then, when he is born, he gets out of the womb of the Divine Mother. That's why he is called the only begotten of the Father. Because being God, the Father, he begot the Christ into the womb of the Divine Mother, who is virgin before the childbirth, during the childbirth or deliverance, and after his always virgin, 
because she is the divine mother in me. This is something that we have to understand. Then that spirit incarnates into that initiate and is united with his causal body. That is the vehicle of the human soul in the sixth dimension. The causal body is called by the Kabbalists, the Son of Man. So the Son of Man is that human soul within the causal body, and that uh, Son of Man has another body, which is the mental body, and the astral body, and the physical. And then the incarnation of that spirit is what we call the Venustic initiation. And then that initiate turns into a real Christian, a vehicle of the Lord. But in the beginning, the Lord incarnates in that initiate as a child, the child God. And that child God is going to take the sins of that initiate as his own sins. That child being perfect because he is the only begotten of God, being perfect is mixed with the human soul of that initiate. And because the human soul of that initiate has ego still, and then we find why he is called the immolated lamb. Because being perfect is being mixed with the imperfection, which is the man the terrestrial man. And this is how he is growing within that man in order to defeat the world, in order to kill the ego. And this is how the Lord is growing and growing and growing within that man. And that man turns, of course, into an avatar. An avatar, among the avatars, there are many levels. Avatar is a Sanskrit word which means messenger. And the word for the Greeks for messenger is angel. So we said the avatar, Samael. We said the angel, Samael, is the same thing. Zri, Samael, is always, of course, the terrestrial man is going to be to turn into a real Christian. Among the real Christian, there are three types. The black one, the white one, and the yellow. The black one, the white and the yellow are related with three wise men that worship the child God in Christmas. The black one is when the Lord incarnates in the beginning, and that initiate has the ego, that's why it's black. But because he has astral, mental, and causal body, he's a king, he's a wife, but he's black. When the Lord grows within himself, and Allah lay that ego, that real Christian turns into a wife, which means someone that has no ego. And with the transformation, it comes into the yellow one, which is when that initiate is transforming all of his astral, mental, and causal bodies into bodies of gold. So among the real Christians, there are many levels. When somebody reaches the, the yellow wise man, of the third type of real Christian is preparing himself in order to die physically and to resurrect physically in order to gain the level of authentic Christian. An authentic Christian is he who, who resurrects from the dead. A resurrected master which gained the purple mantle 
the purple mantle or the purple vesture is only for the resurrected Christ, for the resurrected Christian. He is the one that is worthy of being called Christos, the authentic, the seven type, is the real Christos, or the authentic Christian, because he is, of course, one with the Lord. When we talk about the fifth, the sixth, and the seventh type of Christians, we have to understand that they are related with the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is related with the fifth, sixth, and seventh. So, the fourth, which is a searching Christian, is between the kingdom of heaven in the Tower of Babel. If he polarizes in a positive way, he's going to be the fifth kind, of course. And I repeat the same thing you can find uh, in other religions. When we talk about uh, Islam, Judaism, Brahmanism, Buddhism, you find all the seven types. To learn more about what you learned in this lecture, we invite you to explore the books published by Gloria and Publishing, available from booksellers worldwide. You may also be interested in online courses or upcoming retreats, all of which you can learn about at GnosticTeachings.org. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Will you help others to benefit from this knowledge? Most spiritual schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. Every donation helps. Make a donation now at GnosticTeachings.org. Thank you. May all beings be happy. Thank you.